世界に痛みを神羅天聖。Welcome back, guys. Anime Scale here, and today we are ranking the top 20 strongest ninjutsu techniques in Naruto. Bear in mind, this won't include things like barriers or sealing techniques, since they'll be in a separate video. And like it in my other top 10s, I chose to not include jutsus performed by Six Bars characters or Otsutsukis. Also, we're talking about the jutsu themselves and not the people who use them. Finally, these are all just personal choices, of course, at the end of the day, so feel free to leave your list down in the comments section below. So, without any further ado, let's get started. At number 20, we have the Rasengan, pretty much one of the most recognizable jutsus in all of Naruto, and for good reason. This was one of the few techniques developed by the Four f u k a g e and one only the best ninja are supposed to attempt. This didn't stop Naruto from eventually picking up the technique, and it was as cool as we expected when it was first used. I'm sure we all remember Kabuto in part one when he got hit by the thing. From then on, the Rasengan was one of Naruto's few staples and got him through more tricky situations than you can count. The Rasengan is cool on its own, but what makes it cooler is just how exclusive it is. There have only ever been seven people who could use it, and one of those is a clone of someone else. So, whether it's a normal Rasengan or a giant Rasengan, this thing is going to pack a punch. Number 19, Great Shark Bullet. s Being the ultimate move of one of the strongest Akatsuki members, this move is no joke. It's pretty much something only Kasami can use, and it's easily the strongest water ninjutsu we see in the entire series. Besides just how cool the thing looks, I mean, it's a giant water shark, come on. It also has an interesting quirk that can catch anyone off guard. You see, this ninjutsu can absorb chakra from any ability thrown at it, growing bigger and more powerful. I imagine the term Great Shark doesn't quite do this move the justice it deserves. If the last entry was the strongest water jutsu in the entire show, Creation Rebirth has to be the strongest medical ninjutsu we ever see. Essentially, when Creation Rebirth is active, the user can't die. Any injury, no matter how severe, will instantly heal. For a short time, the user is as immortal as anyone can be. Unfortunately, this comes at a pretty steep price. Creation Rebirth works by forcibly making every cell in the body work overtime, dividing into new cells. This isn't something they can do forever, and as a result, the user cuts down on their own lifespan using this technique. It's an incredibly strong technique that also comes with an incredibly steep price. Moving on, another one of these techniques that only one person in the world can use. This technique allowed Orochimaru to gain a sort of immortality, as he could pretty much pop out to people who were using his curse mark. When this happens, the curse mark erupts into a giant multi headed snake bigger than most summons. Orochimaru pops out of one of these heads, seemingly alive and well. In the official character data book, this is stated to be Orochimaru's strongest jutsu. And the only reason this technique didn't have a better showing in the anime is because it ran up against Itachi Sasano, another technique that will pop up later on down the list. This is probably one of the most unique abilities in the entire series, and that's saying something. Conan can make an entire environment with nothing but billions of paper bombs. You can see where this is going. Getting caught in the middle of a nuclear bomb is enough to kill just about anything and everything. This technique is so absurd that even Obito could only survive using Izanagi. This is the Obito who no one besides Minato had ever landed a hit on till this point. If you thought the Rasengan hit hard, take that and multiply it by 10 to get the Rasen Shuriken. The Rasen Shuriken is what happens when you add Wind Chakra to the Rasengan, and the results speak for themselves. Not only is this thing going to pack a punch, but it's also going to slice and dice pretty much anyone that gets hit by it on a cellular level. That's not something just anyone can recover from. This technique is so dangerous, Naruto was forbidden from using it until he could throw it safely. In its first showing, this jutsu was strong enough to one shot Kakazu, who fought the first Hakage and survived. Oh, and just like the Rasengan, Naruto can of course use a gigantic version of this too if he needed any more power. It more than earns a place on this list. This fire style jutsu doesn't look all that special. I mean, it's pretty much just a wall of flame you shoot from your mouth. The thing that really sets it apart, though, is how absurdly strong it is. In Shippuden, it took at least 10 different ninjas, all using the water wall technique, to match the sheer scale of this thing. 
Now, whether or not this technique is only so strong because Madara is the one using it is debatable. Still, it's probably the second strongest 5 ace jutsu in the entire series, and it's hard to leave it off the list. Kirin probably wins the award for one of the coolest jutsu designs in the entire series. If you thought a giant water shark was cool, a giant thunder giraffe is definitely cooler. Not only is this thing strong enough to level hills, the second time it was used, it was strong enough to make even Naruto in his Kurama avatar flinch. It's also a technique that doesn't need nearly as much chakra as you think. In fact, it doesn't directly need any chakra at all. Just so long as there are clouds and well, thunder. Otherwise, you do need to find a way to get those clouds, such as spamming the sky with fire jutsu. The sheer versatility of Kirin gets it a spot here. It's just a shame we don't see it that often. <laughs> Imagine a jutsu on such a large scale that you could change the shape of an entire battlefield to give yourself an advantage. That's what this entry is. Deep Forest Emergence is probably one of the rarest and yet most sought-after techniques in all of Naruto. Just about everyone from Orochimaru to Danzo to Madara have tried to get their hands on this, and for good reason. It's even stated that this technique was key to making the Hidden Leaf Village in the first place, as if it needed any more justification to be here. The only real downside to this seems to be that it's absurdly hard to control, to the point where the only people capable of properly using it are Madara and Hashirama. <laughs> Number 11, Amaterasu, by far the strongest fire-style jutsu in the entire series. It's also definitely the coolest looking. This dojutsu-based ninjutsu shoots black flames at anything they look at. This fire cannot be put out by any water jutsu. In fact, it will not stop burning until whatever it's on is completely vaporized. The only way to put those flames out is if the user purposefully extinguishes them or that the opponent has a Rinnegan or Karma to absorb it. Otherwise, unless you're one of the few select people who can somehow avoid this attack, it's an instant game over. The only way Jiraiya, one of the three legendary Sanin dealt with it, was sealing it away. <laughs> At the number 10 spot, we have the gravitational powers of the Diva Path, Bansho, Tenin, and Shinra Tensei. These are Jutsu only granted by the Rinnegan, and they definitely live up to it. They're both kind of different versions of the same thing, gravity manipulation, and that's why they share a spot on this list. Using these techniques, Pain was more or less impervious to all physical attacks with a few small limitations. You couldn't even run away from him, since he can just pull you to him, and there's not much you can do about it. We, of course, need to talk about what really gives this a place here. At its strongest, Pain destroyed the entire Leaf Village, and there was absolutely nothing anybody could do about it. It's only because everything further up on this list is even more insane that I had to put this Jutsu only at number 10. Particle Style is easily one of the most absurdly strong offensive Jutsus in the entire series. This is because if you get hit by it, that's it. There's absolutely nothing you can do unless you have something equally as ridiculous as Kamui, Rinnegan, or Karma that are quite rare things to obtain. Particle Style does just what its name suggests. Anything hit by it is vaporized into, well, particles. This is a technique that goes beyond any kind of physical defense since it vaporizes its targets. The only thing you can really do against it is dodge it. Well, good luck with that, considering even Sasuke didn't manage that much. If it wasn't for Obito, this jutsu would have ended Sasuke a lot earlier and made Shippuden a lot shorter. It's safe to say that this is one of the most feared things in the entire Naruto world. Easily the strongest ability granted by the Rinnegan, and it's exactly as insane as you'd expect it to be. Using this, a Rinnegan user can make a tiny gravity orb. Tossing this into the air pulls everything but the user from the surrounding area into the orb, making a giant floating ball of mass. This is more than enough to crush just about anyone you could use this against. It also seems like the technique is only as strong as the amount of chakra you can put into it. This reaches almost comical proportions once you realize the Sage of Six Paths is said to have used this jutsu to create the moon. Yes, the moon. This is a bit of a reach, considering this is a technique only a tail beast or its Jinjuriki can use, but it deserves a spot here. Essentially, this is pretty much condensing and throwing a ball of absurd amounts of chakra at things, but it gets the job done. Biju Damas have time and time again been shown to destroy hills, mountains, valleys, you name it. These are only as strong as the tail beasts using them, so a Biju Dharma from the Nine Tails is many times stronger than one from the One Tails. 
This is also one of the most influential techniques in the entire series, having inspired the creation of the Rasengan. The Bijou Dharma from the Ten Tails was about to wipe out the entire allied shinobi forces if it wasn't for Minato sending it somewhere else. Even hundreds of miles away, the shockwave was enough to almost blow away everyone that had just barely survived the blast. The fourth Akage was fast, so fast that nobody could keep up with him. What if he got even faster though? So fast he could be absolutely anywhere, even on the other end of the planet, instantly. This is all thanks to the Flying Raijin, probably one of the most useful ninjutsu in the show. By placing certain markers on places, people or things, the fourth and second Hokage could teleport to them instantly. This ability allowed the fourth to take out entire armies all by himself. The best part, once placed, these marks never wear off. Using this technique, the fourth Hokage was the first person who ever hurt Obito. That says everything that needs to be said. This jutsu is single-handedly responsible for one of the most iconic lines in all of Naruto Shippuden. It's when Gaara couldn't help but wonder if this jutsu was the power of a god, as no normal ninja could possibly have used this technique. Essentially, this technique pulls a giant meteor from orbit and crashes it into the location of the user, instantly killing anything and everything that happened to be there. When the allied shinobi forces saw it, their instinct was to run, and for good reason. Did you happen to somehow survive the first one? Well, it can spawn two meteors too. Good luck with the second one. This technique is so absurd it's guaranteed to kill the user too. The only reason Madara bothered with it was because he was a reanimation. This Isano is pretty much the ultimate defensive jutsu and one of the most recognizable abilities of the Sharingan. Using this, users can summon giant avatars around themselves that are all but impenetrable from the outside. These things can be gigantic and are more than strong enough to go head to head with tailed beasts. What makes these especially strong is that each Sisano is unique and might have completely different abilities. Sasuke can shoot out gigantic arrows. Itachi Sisano has the Yata Mirror, an artifact that can absorb any physical attack thrown at it. There's a reason it has such a high place here. All of this is without taking into account Sisanos that are especially ridiculous, such as whatever Sasuke ended up making once he absorbed the chakra of all the tailed beasts, or Kakashi when he casually cut off parts of Kaguya's tailed beast form. A lot of people think that this is a summon, but this giant wood golem is created by Hashirama. It was shown to be not only as huge as the perfect Sisano, but also a lot more versatile thanks to the wooden dragon wrapped around its torso. In the anime, this thing was shown going toe to toe with a Sisano empowered nine tails. I don't think anything more needs to be said after that. Kamui is hands down one of the most absurd abilities in not just Naruto, but in all of Shonen. Using Kamui, Obito can send his body to a pocket dimension, rendering it invulnerable to any kind of attack. You quite literally can't hit Obito, except in the one instance where he has to make physical contact with you. Oh, and Obito can use it to pretty much go anywhere he feels like, as fast as he feels like, only a little slower than the flying Raijin. Obito can't use this forever, so if you have an attack like Conan's, you can technically still hit Obito. Still, there really is nothing stopping him from just using it to leave and come back later. Yes, it's absurd for a reason, and is easily the single strongest Manga Kyo ability there is. Pretty much the only way Obito lost was because he went up against Kakashi. The one other person who could use Kamui. If Obito could use Kamui after absorbing the Ten Tails, Naruto Shippuden would probably have ended a lot differently. Imagine all of the techniques on this list. How ridiculous would something have to be to top all of them? Edo Tensei allows you to revive anyone you have a physical sample of, minus some very specific conditions. These reincarnated people can be turned into mindless puppets. This wouldn't be too bad except for the fact that they can use most of the jutsu they could when they were alive. Our first taste of this was of course Orochimaru bringing back the first and second Hokages. If that sounds ridiculous, it might be a small consolation to know that they weren't as strong as they used to be. Still, this technique pretty much made the fourth Great Ninja War as long as it was, with Kabuto bringing back hundreds of dead shinobi to fight the allied forces. If there's one jutsu that probably just shouldn't have ever been a thing, it's probably this one. So there we go guys, again this list is purely my personal opinion and I suspect everyone has their own list, 
when it comes to this. I probably left something out of it too, so be sure to leave your own list down below in the comment section. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We're going to be talking about every jutsu that doesn't qualify for this list soon. This is Anime Scale Out. Bye.